Hey, welcome back. This is part two of the Flipper PC build. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure to go watch part one up in the card in the upper right hand corner, or I'll also put the link in the description below. Basically what this video series is, is me and a bunch of my friends, we've all upgraded our computers over the past four years or something. So we all have a bunch of hardware that's just kind of laying around. So instead of being boring and selling the parts one by one, we figured, hey, let's put it all into one big system and just sell the whole thing for a profit. And I actually have it with me right now. It's sitting over there. So let me get this real quick. You probably can't see the inside very well, but that's because of the reflection of the window. And I also left the protective plastic on because I'm planning on selling this and I don't want the glass panel to get damaged or destroyed. But basically what it's got is a 6700K, a 3 gig GTX 1060, 280 millimeter liquid cooler, 16 gigs of RAM, SSD hard drive combo, and a 500 watt power supply. So it's actually a pretty ballin' system. But I'm not just gonna let you take my word for it. I actually ran some benchmarks and I'll show you how everything performs. I tested pretty much as many games as I could. The only games I don't have benchmarks for were Fortnite and Overwatch. And that's because one, I don't own Overwatch and I'm not planning on buying it. And two, Fortnite decided to cancel itself. So I'm like, oh, okay, there's no Fortnite benchmarks. So I tested three different 3D Mark benchmarks, the Fire Strike and Fire Strike Extreme for DX11, and then Time Spy for DX12. And the quality, I just left the stock settings. I didn't play with resolution or detail or any of those things. But in just regular Fire Strike, it actually got a 10,572 score overall. Going to extreme, that kind of got cut in half to 5598. And then Time Spy actually did pretty well at 4107. In Fire Strike, it was better than 55% of all other systems tested. And in Fire Strike Extreme, it was 34%, and in Time Spy, 33% better. And then I also tested the systems in both 1080p and 1440p. I feel those are the most common resolutions. So with CSGO, I have the settings cranked to high and very high, so pretty much as high as they can go. And it actually crushed at 1080p, almost getting 240 frames per second. Now, this is only a 60 hertz panel, but I have no doubt in my mind that this would run 1080p, 144 hertz, or as you can see, almost 240 hertz with pretty much no issue. And then stepping up to 1440p, and we're still past the 144 hertz mark. Taking a look at GTA 5 next, I know this is a kind of an old title now, because it's been out on PC for what, over five years? but it's still a very popular game, so that's a big reason I tested it. I had the settings set to very high. If I were to step it up anymore, it would have been breaking into the four and a half gigs of VRAM territory, and the graphics card unfortunately only has three gig. And at 1080p, as you can see, it almost got 112 FPS, and then 1440p, it dropped down to around 80. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm gonna give a shout out to one of my friends real quick because I actually didn't know Rainbow Six had a built-in benchmark until he told me. So thank you, Spiro. So I had this one tested on high as well, and I'm pretty sure I was also reaching the VRAM limitations with this game as well, still breaking up into the four gig VRAM territory. So just stepping it down to high and everything was playing out really well. At 1080p, it was breaking over that 144 Hertz mark. And then at 1440p, we were still getting over hundred FPS. So a 90 Hertz monitor would definitely work for that kind of thing. Next up is Rocket League, and just like CSGO, this isn't exactly that hard of a game to run. Due to its popularity, I felt I needed to run it anyway. With settings cranked as high as they can go, we were getting still over 200 FPS in 1080p, and then in 1440p, we were still breaking the 144 hertz mark. All right, so that's pretty much gonna do it for the benchmarks. I will include this parts list of the entire system itself, but I'll pick this video back up once I'm actually talking to a buyer. Okay. I've got good news and I've got bad news. And the good news is that the system has sold. It actually sold a little over a month ago. As you could tell, I'm no longer in my apartment. And that's because I haven't been able to make this follow-up video because I've been pounded with finals week. So stress has been at an all-time high lately. And more good news is that I actually managed to sell it to one of my friends up at college. So I know it's going to get taken care of. It's going to be used a whole lot. And I'm actually really happy I could get him his first gaming computer. The bad news, however, is that I don't exactly have footage of the handoff because as many of you may or may not know, my primary camera is my smartphone camera because I don't own a physical DSLR or mirrorless camera to shoot videos with because that's money. I'm kind of cheap. And what actually happened was my phone was basically dead. So even if I were to start recording, I'd maybe even get like 
half of a cliff before it would have ended up dying. Not only that, but I didn't have time to ask him for his permission to record the handoff, and I didn't want to seem weird, if that makes sense. But back to the good news, I actually managed to get a little bit of a bonus in addition to the price that I was selling the computer for, which we could take a look at right now. So the processor and the motherboard belong to one person, and I worked out a deal with him to get $100 each per part, because I was looking around the used market and I wasn't seeing much higher than $200. I think I saw one listing for these two parts for $225 combined, but it had been listed for quite a while. The liquid cooler, on the other hand, was actually my component. I wanted to get 80 bucks out of that. These two kits of RAM belong to another person and he wanted $35 a kit, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, 70 bucks for 16 gigs of RAM, not bad. The primary storage drive, the 120 gig SSD, I actually had to buy new because none of us had a spare SSD laying around and the used market was kind of sketchy and a little bit scarce. So I just paid the difference and I got one new for a little under 20 bucks. The secondary drive, the Western Digital 2 terabyte hard drive actually belonged to me and I wanted to get 45 bucks out of that because one terabyte hard drives can be had for fairly cheap nowadays. And since it was also a used drive, I figured I'd cut the price. As we keep going down, we encounter the last part that belonged to a different person, which was the graphics card, the GTX 1060. He wanted to get $90 out of that, so that's what we listed that part for. The Fantex case and the Seasonic power supply, I actually had to buy new as well, in addition to the SSD. And that's because none of my friends had any of these parts laying around, and the used market was pretty hard to find something at a reasonable price. Cases were pretty absent. I was seeing a lot of cheap stuff for like $10, $15, but they really weren't eye catcher cases by any means. And power supplies, I was either seeing things from the low end, 400 watts roughly, and then the high end, roughly a thousand watts. Nothing really in between. And I purchased both of those for 60 and $50 respectively. I also got a Windows 10 home key for a little under 10 bucks, very good deal. And then the last part that actually belonged to me was my NZXT Hue Plus lighting kit. And I wanted to get 40 bucks out of that because I knew NZXT released their Hue 2 lineup. It still held up very well. It looked fantastic and I'm so glad I put it in the build. And now before I get into the prices of this, I talked to my friend that I sold this to and I asked him what kind of peripherals he had, monitor, keyboard, mouse, headset, and he's basically had nothing. He was going into this completely brand new. So I said, hey, I've got an old Black Widow Chroma from 2014 that I used for some years. It still works perfectly fine. And then I also told him that I had the Corsair Night Sword RGB laying around that I wasn't using. I did a review on that. You can watch the video up in the card or I'll put it in the description below. And so he told me he was really interested and agreed to buy both of them. And so for the Night Sword, since it was basically brand new, I sold it for new price. And now I wanted to get $100 out of the Black Widow Chroma, but it was from like 2014, 2013 even. So it was a very old keyboard despite working pretty flawlessly. But that in addition to the build fee that I put on, would have made the whole thing roughly $1,000. That includes the tower, the keyboard, and the mouse. It was like $980, something like that. But I cut him a deal. I told him if he wants to buy all three of these things, tower, keyboard, and mouse, I'll cut $30 off since he'd be saving me the hassle of trying to list all three components at once. And he agreed. So the whole bundle totaled for $950 flat, which I think is a pretty remarkable price considering this was the first system I'd flipped before. Now, of course, I didn't make $950 profit because like I said, some of the parts had to go to other people that I had to give the money to them for, as well as I had to buy some parts new. So let's take a look at how that actually breaks down. And looking at the PC part picker list, you can actually see the whole total was $950. Now, the amount of money that I made, I set it up so that every part that was mine, I just left as not purchased. So when you add up the price of the liquid cooler, the hard drive, the lighting kit, keyboard, and mouse, in addition to the build fee, and I made a total of $451.08. That is an astounding return, especially considering I was only planning on selling the computer itself, not the peripherals. So if we do the math for that, the whole system was 401 and eight cents. Subtract the 70 for the keyboard and the 80 for the mouse. 
I would have made 300 bucks, a little over 300 bucks. So being able to sell these peripherals actually made me really glad for a number of reasons. For one, I don't have to worry about them anymore. They're not taking up space. I don't have to worry about listing them to sell them because that's what I was going to plan on doing anyway. But other than the fact that I made a little bit more money off of it, I got my friend well on his way to start building his setup. He's already got the desktop, keyboard, and mouse taken care of. So all he really needs now is a monitor. He could probably also get a headset so that he can have something with a microphone for when he plays games with other people. But the monitor itself nowadays would most likely contain speakers. So that covers his audio solution. So what have we learned by all of this? PC flipping can be a very fun hobby. I actually had a very good time doing this. And I'm glad I could help out a couple of my friends flip some old parts that they're not using. But because I put all the parts into one whole system and flipped it that way, I was able to get someone into the PC gaming community, which I think is fantastic, especially considering it's someone I know personally. So I'm really glad I had the opportunity to make this series. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing a little bit more insight into what it takes to flip a computer. I'm not an expert by any means. There's plenty of people out there that even I watch. I love those guys. So if flipping computers is something you're interested in, I can highly recommend it, especially if you want to get someone you know into PC gaming. If you've got parts laying around, you and your friends have some parts laying around, see if you can't make one whole system and just try and flip that instead of selling each part individually. And so if you like this video, you know what to do. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one.